mean, this is, this is uh, another part of you know, what is a, quite a substantial stream of research which started back in the uh, early 90s uh, when Kevin Keller uh, visited here on a number of occasions and I arranged him for, uh, to speak to the Market Research Society and he was at that stage, he presented his paper, his um, uh, classic paper on brand equity, customer brand equity, he presented that in the department. And that stimulated a, a stream of research and uh, people here like Mark Lynn who were part of that when he was doing his master's thesis. Uh, but in the early 90s, we worked very much within the uh, what we call the traditional uh, North American perspective of brandy, uh, which is very much uh, Kevin Keller, David Arkar, which is a lot of that, uh, what was going on in the 80s was this whole business about brand e equity. And uh, the politics of that, and Bob would be far more familiar with this, is protecting uh, you know, the communications industry because there's a lot of pressure on cost and so uh, the role of the brand in terms of a communication vehicle um, it needed to be articulated uh, more clearly and uh, so the term brand equity was coined in the 1980s and the Marketing Science Institute uh, got behind this and there were a number of special issues and we got caught up in that the first, uh, first bit of research was with Lorraine Sunday, which uh, uh, Roger, you remember? <laughs> Some other people will remember Lorraine, but we replicated the uh, brand extension paper by Arthur and Keller. And then that, that was actually quite an interesting one because it's highly cited because a number of other people, because we came up with contrary results, then a number of other people replicated as well. And there's a very good paper in JMR around about the uh, 2000, which is a reanalysis because we all provided all our data sets and it showed that the original work by Upper and Killer was the exception and all the other results lined up. But it started with, with, with that and then Mark got interested in this area and um, also did some more work in terms of the branding area. Kevin Pryor, I don't know where Kevin is these days, but uh, he got involved. Uh, so that was the first phase of the work and that was very much within the conventional lens. Um, then um, we, uh, towards the latter part of the 90s, we got very much interested in a relational perspective on marketing. And uh, Robert Davis uh, did his PhD with uh, Margot and myself, and uh, it was an in-depth case study of Woolworths Online. And that started to articulate a lot more clearly uh, what I would call this modern perspective of branding, which is a far more relational perspective. And that stimulated uh, a number of pieces of research and there's a number of theses along the lines so there's been a number of other theses which have been done uh, but it started just to think about brands in, in a relational sense and an experiential sense and so uh, that has uh, resulted in uh, quite a little bit of conceptual development and with Vicky and Mark we had a paper in response to the service dominant logic and marketing theory and um, so now there's this group of people, and I'm very keen to actually get this group of people together uh, so uh, we can actually, with Sandy starting and a number of other people, so we've got, almost got the makings of what I think is quite a distinctive school of thought, which could be centered at the University of Auckland. So I'm, I'm very keen to see that progress. Okay, well what we'll talk about today is a little bit about the motivation for this particular study and then we'll talk about this issue about conceptualizing the service brand and uh, it's interesting um, Vargo and Lush now have got something called the service dominant logic which uh, we were all working with 15 years ago with the Scandinavians but now it's been articulated more clearly uh, by Vargo and Lush and is getting a lot of uh, attention and so that's why we're calling this the service brand to be consistent with the service dominant module and then we'll just go through this particular study and have a look at some of its implications. Right, well, what about um, the sort of background to this? And as I said, you know, the initial focus on branding research was about consumers' associations and beliefs about attributes of the brand. Uh, 
And so now we've got um, this sort of integrating role of service in marketing as emerging. And so what we wanted to do then was to start to research brands in this context. And so what happens when you start to do this is that you move away from awareness and image and logo more to the value adding processes on, in the business and the creation of customer experiences. So when we do this, and Mark with his PhD articulated this very clearly, is that you, you recognize that the brand plays a broader relational role and it's not only, not only interfacing with customers, but the company, its employees, and a network of stakeholders. So that is, uh, and it's very interesting that 